Wow, Nancy Pelosi sure seems excited over the Super Bowl. We're live in Houston. The Super Bowl's just hours away. But let's talk politics, because politics is my Super Bowl. And Donald Trump is doing so much so fast, he's like a movie franchise releasing all of his sequels at once. In a world of injustice, one justice reigns supreme. Nude Man on a Unicorn Films presents Neil Gorsuch, with special appearances by Jean-Claude Van Damme and Dolph Lundgren. So was that a surprise, was it? Executive Action 2, Supreme Justice. It's even better than the first. And no one can handle Trump, including the frantic media, the bedwetting celebrities, and this, America's sweetheart. You should be ashamed of yourself! You should! You should. She is sexy. That's right, that is a professor screaming at the NYPD. What a peach. A rotten peach. She's a professor. Hey guys, she's a professor. You're here to protect the Nazis. So f you. God Those kids should not have to take fists off to neo Nazis and you're putting them in that situation. Go to hell! I bet she smells great, like a dumpster full of old salad. Meanwhile, former comedian Sarah Silverman demanded a violent coup. At the same time, leftist scum were destroying the liberal utopia that is Berkeley. She walked it back. She's about as edgy as a panda fart. Then there's Deborah Messing, who tweeted support to the same creeps in Berkeley. You gotta hand it to Trump. He is driving the worst people crazy. I love it. They're all turning into this. I'm disgusting! I'm a professor! How dare you! How dare you! Protect you, Nazis! So what is she a professor of exactly? How to be a soaring jackass? I love it. Donald Trump is like an itch that liberals can't scratch until they finally rip their own faces off. It's so bad that they now demand that Tom Brady renounce his friendship to Trump or face their ultimate wrath. Of course, these are the same twerps who admired Colin Kaepernick, the low IQ lemming who worships murderous dictators. Colin wouldn't stand for the national anthem. Now, no one can stand him. He's a large bowl of stupid. So it's Saturday night. Who would you rather be? A radical rube like Colin, desperately trying to seek political relevance as his career dries up? Or Tom Brady, who doesn't think Donald Trump is such a bad guy? Well, one of them is playing the Super Bowl tomorrow, and the other is sitting home in his dirty Che underpants, sniffing his fingers. I'll let you decide. Period. Let's welcome tonight's guests. He's tougher than calculus made of sandpaper. From the greatest football team in history, the San Francisco 49ers, three-time Super Bowl champion Randy Cross. Yes. Like a coffee enema, he brightens my day every morning. Fox and Friends co-host Brian Kilmeade. She's as grim as she is slim. NASA Review reporter, Fox News contributor, Kat Tim. Finally, the Goodyear blimp is his throw pillow. TNA wrestler, Fox News contributor, Tyrus. All right, Kilmeade, 
because you're the least athletic here, I want to go to you first and talk politics. Protests all over the country against Trump. It's like Trump is starting in a mutiny, and the more action that he causes, the more I kind of like him. Yeah, well, think about this. And in London and Australia today, and the thing is to keep in mind that, that, that I haven't spoken to one person who voted for Donald Trump that's disappointed in Donald no. Trump. Because this is exactly what he did. He basically took his speech of uh, his collection of speeches from his running for president, and yes. one by one, he's checking them off. And yeah. people are outraged by it. Now, was the rollout on the executive order on the five na on the seven nation pause bad? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Was the communication bad? Absolutely. But since then, think about it. We had someone with a machete in front of the Louvre from Egypt, right. in France, macheteing a French soldier because yeah. he was French and not Islamic. Exactly. That's what Donald Trump's trying to avoid. He's yeah. not trying to do anything else except to keep the country safe. Yep. Why don't people realize it's that? It's so funny. Donald Trump, Donald Trump will make a bad argument for himself, but then the facts back up his argument. And then he's always proven right, and everybody goes, yeah, he's right. All right, Randy. Politics, sports, you're an expert at both. I, I watch your Twitter feed. Oh, you do? Yes. How do you feel about the fact that, like, they are demanding that Tom Brady relinquishes friendship to Donald Trump? Yeah, every time I turn on any kind of news or I read anything online, it's people losing their flipping mind. Yeah, I know. It, it's like the lady in the open. It's, yes. My, that escalated quickly. Yes, that is. Yes. <laughs> um, why should Tom Brady, why should Bill Belichick, I mean, why yeah. should... Robert Kraft explain yeah. their friendship. It's got nothing to do with what we're doing here this week. Yeah, yeah. no, it's true. And by the way, Kat, yes. as you know, a lot of professional athletes, they do a lot of unusual things. They hang out with strippers. They shoot themselves in clubs. They do. They fight dogs. They don't actually fight dogs, but they have dogs fight each right, other. each other, which is not nice. Yeah, that's not, I'm against yeah. all of that. <laughs> but here you have a guy who's just a friend with the president of the United States. That's evil. Yeah, well, I miss good sports insults. When I would go to Tiger games from Detroit as a kid, I could impress my uncles by insulting players from the other team. And now we're doing that by being like, Tom Brady's friends with the president. And like, that's the best insult you can have because you can't be mean, you can't hang out with Trump. If you were sitting at home, so concerned that Tom, Bra Tom Brady's out hanging out with the president, maybe you should stop sitting at home. Yes. And find something else to do with your life, something a little more meaningful. Tom Brady doesn't care what you think about who he's hanging out with, because he's Tom Brady. Yeah, he is Tom Brady. By the way, I went to uh, the same high school as he did. That's all yeah, I got, Tyra. Same thing. <laughs> that's all I kind of pathetic that that's, that's awesome. the only sports trivia fact. No, you have. have another one. You have a link to Randy. Who? You have a link to uh, Mr. Cross. Yeah, that's true. We, my, my mother and your mother-in-law used to play, play bridge together at Green Hills Country Club. That's right, beautiful Millbury, California. Right, yep, you, you are like a sports guy. I am, after I'm all. almost yeah. like a. I'm almost he like went a to high school with like the guy guy. next to the guy next to the guy who's yeah, the guy. Yeah, he's the same high school as a sports guy. Cyrus, you actually you did you try out the up Dallas Cowboys? Yeah, yeah, actually I did. Yep, I chased football for a little while. Ended up playing arena football and my knees and I tripped and fell into wrestling, so it worked out. Yeah. Um, what are your so, thoughts on this whole thing? Why is Colin Kaepernick seen as great? Okay, and well, first of all, in sports, it, it's great when when great athletes are citizens, too. And when I say that, I'm talking about Muhammad Ali, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, yeah. men of great substance in sports. But when they went in and took on a cause, they took and encompassed the cause. They themselves were the movement. So what they did, you respected because they practiced what they preached. Right. Colin Kaepernick, one, hadn't become a major star in sports where people looked at him as... Oh, he's a hero and this and that. And then when he decided to be a citizen and talk about sports, he wasn't educated. Yeah. He didn't vote. He, he didn't back dumb. anything up. He basically said, he well, dumb. my girlfriend made me do this. Yeah. And that's why he doesn't get the respect he deserves. The I think the hair is growing great. inside his head. But he, he did all those things to try to make a point. He didn't have the afro yeah. before. Yeah. He felt if I grow an afro and I can relate to this because I'm light-skinned too, he thought he'd be more blacker and be yeah. taken more yeah. credibly. And that's not how it works. So I have a theory. Indulge me. I know that Kat might not understand this because you're you're only 12. My Thank theory you. is Donald Trump is the 1976 to the 1980s Oakland Raiders. So they were they were they had a reputation for dirty oh, yeah. play. They went out late, but, but they went out late. But they won. They won. And the press, the press and the media, they are the 1976 Tampa Bay Buccaneers who lost every single game. I was going to say the 2008. I can Detroit understand Lions. going out late and then getting your work done the next day. Yeah, oh, that's the good. Detroit Lions also were terrible. That's the media. Oh, so How's that for a theory? Uh, that's, it's not terrible. I think, I think the Raiders didn't give really very much of a heck about 
No. What everybody else thought. Otis they, this drunk. They, they took oh, care John, of John Matuza. Oh my God. And they, Lyle Alzado. They told you what they were gonna do. My, one of my favorite little movies in the 70s was Billy Jack. It was yes. a terrible movie. Oh yeah, great but Billy movie. Jack told him. <laughs> yes. Billy Jack told yes. the, the bad guy, "I'm gonna take this right foot what? and I'm gonna put it on the right side of your face, and there's nothing you can do about it." Right. And that's Donald what, Trump is the Billy Jack of presidents. It's what our president's doing. Yeah, yeah, right. but, I didn't but, even occur to but me. He, but here's the other thing. In life, if you ever get in trouble, sometimes you say, "Wow, you know, how do I get out of this?" Donald Trump does not mind the angst that normally uh, overcomes people. He does not mind the stress and the controversy. Right. He embraces it. He does not care because he's thoroughly convinced he is right. Yes. And yeah. people well, love that about him. He's also it. 70. You don't well, give a damn after 60. He I... is right. Yeah. To the protest real quick, you know what that, I consider that the same thing as? They watched their friend Hillary get beat up in a street fight, and no one did anything. Yeah. She didn't vote. But I, and then when she was oh. laying down, now they're like, oh, what happened? I, I, I Let's do theory. something. So they're going to protest everything to make that's, up. I don't think they like Hillary. That's I don't think it's about Hillary. That's screaming Lady. That's screaming Professor Lady. She's clearly, she was alone. It's important yeah. to note that she was there by herself. By herself. Yeah. She was yeah. defending the students. That is a woman that gets paid to teach kids. By the way, there is no, I noticed that almost all athletes are conservative. And here's why, because liberal liberal ethos does not work. You can't have affirmative action for, like, your offensive line. Like, there are no women in the Super Bowl tomorrow. That's yeah. unfair. That's sexist. Well, that professor should have been in, in Chicago in 1968 yeah. at that march. Yeah. All right, we got to be mad about something, though. We got so much more. Up next, will the halftime show get political? We have no idea. But we're going to pretend that we do. <laughs> Welcome back. My ex-wife, Lady Gaga, says she'll start the Super Bowl halftime show the same way that I sleep at night, suspended from the roof. I wonder if it'll be special because she's been planning it since she was four, so she knows exactly what she's going to do. It will be special because, you know, I've been planning this since I was four, so I know exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, the only thing I planned when I was four was my next poo. Still... Some are wondering if Gaga, an outspoken Hillary Clinton supporter, will use the show to take a shot at President Trump. Meanwhile, there are reports the halftime show will feature hundreds of drones. It's true, she hired the entire MSNBC lineup. I couldn't resist it, Kilmeade. Yeah, I don't blame you, but I do think she's going to use this opportunity to speak out against Trump. I don't really? think there's any question about it. She's already indicated that she would, and I think it's totally uh, abhorrent. If it's her concert, I paid, I know what I'm getting. But this is not her show. Yeah. The show is between the teams, and it should not be about her. And they're going to be in that locker room saying, D what do you think about what Larry, uh, Lady Gaga did? Yep. Instead of, you know, Brady's passes or, or what's, uh, what Ryan uh, completed. And it bothers me because I think people are egging her on. Right. You know, uh, Randy, if there's one thing I want when I'm watching a football game is to be lectured by a rich pop singer. Yeah, it's, it's the best thing, the best way to go. <laughs> you saw those wings she was wearing there yeah, in that yeah. one costume. She better have something a little different in mind or she'll <laughs> she'll reach terminal velocity in about two seconds. <laughs> That's true. That's right. She's going to be on the, uh, she's coming the down roof. the roof. Yes. Coming down. Her and the drones are going to. Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be all these drones, Kat. I, I, Do you like drones? No, I don't like the way that we abuse uh, drones against the Constitution to kill um, innocent civilians. However, in terms of Lady Gaga, that's fine. Use the drones. Do your little songs dance. She's a great performer. Yeah. She's, she's you know, she's entertaining to watch. Why waste it? I hope that you're wrong, Brian. I hope she doesn't talk about Trump at all. Because, first of all, we already know how you feel about Trump. Right. We already know that you're a Trump is bad, the Trump is bad team. We already know that. Yeah. That's fine. That'd be like her going out there and being like, I like attention. Or, yeah. you know, you know she, she, likes she, wore, a meat know dress. she yeah. wore a meat dress. Okay. Who in the blue we, we hell is she going to be this. preaching to? That Nobody. is true. Yeah. People who like her, football. Her base, I'm not going to watch football. It's yeah. like Eric and they get concussions. So they'll be watching the Pompey Olympics yeah. on Animal Don't Animal forget Animal MMA. On. Yeah. So Super Bowl is a time that comes people together. We don't talk about politics. We talk about football. Yeah. So if she goes out there and she says, death to Trump or whatever, it's going to be laughable. It'll just backfire on her. her Bottom skill. line is just remember, just get your limbs think straight. Do yeah. your dance and move on, because it should be a rock and roll band anyways. Uh, the, you know, keep in mind, too, her, her uh, record sales, whatever they call it today, downloads uh, are going down. So really? She, this is an opportunity for her to take 50% of the country that would be against that stance and not 
tell them to go buy somebody else. What if she comes out for Trump? Could this be? Could she? Come out, she'll come out in a red hat. It right. could happen. By the way, if she does, if she does, comes out with a big left wing kind of thing, there, we should demand equal time and we should airdrop Ted Rock down from the roof. I don't right. wanna, Absolutely. Or Ted Nugent. I, Nugent, 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 I yes. will also maybe not watch a Kid Rock before. Or three doors down. Him. But if yeah. Toby yeah. Keith did the same thing, yeah. I would be saying the same thing. Not here, bruh. Yeah. Not Remember, here. Sing your song. It's and literally let us watch everywhere the game. else. Because most the of us are going to use the bathroom and loading up on our nachos. Yeah. So we're not going to sit around and listen to a speech. You remember why we did this? You, you were playing in the game, Randy. We did this because people were tuning out at halftime because it was being counter programmed by networks like Fox. Right. They're right. putting on special episodes of The Simpsons. So they got real acts there. But those acts, when they become bigger than the game, are a problem. Hence Janet Jackson. Why would the NFL even allow a controversial person to even perform? What well, kind it, of acts would you like at to halftime? It's one of the it's one oh. of the oh. hardest oh. parts about the Super Bowl is halftime. Yeah. Because your normal halftime is what, 12, 15 minutes yeah. long? Super Bowl is a half hour. You've got to sit in the, in the uh, locker room. Coaches can only X and O and adjust. You have nothing to do. They get down for about 10 minutes. They're going, I got nothing for you. I, have a question. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Take a nap. Lay down. I have a question. How does one get a job as like a water boy? Like, where does that, what do you, how do you apply for something like water that? Water boy. Water boy. As in not you water man. Out, right? No, I'm you a water boy. Out. You aged out. Yeah. I aged out. You not aged water out. man. That is water sexist. Boy. You're the right yeah. height. I am the right height. I am. Kind of and I'm great out. with a towel. Right. <laughs> I really am. But you know what's yeah. great? The Falcons, uh, well, Arthur Blank is flying the entire yeah. organization to this game because it is a team game behind the scenes in the offices. Up wow. until about three months ago, my son was working for the Falcons in their really? sales department. He's he's pretty sick. He's not here. <laughs> he took another job. Well, now it, he took another job because they have to sell at that brand new stadium. Or get boxes and boxes of tissues for them when it's over. The Falcons are fell, selling that stadium you, out just fine. They are now. Forty-five thousand. Did you want to? What's your ideal halftime? Oh, rock and roll. Like uh, when I went to the Super Bowl with uh, Snoop. We Bruce Springsteen was there in Tampa, and it was great. Rock and roll always sounds better. There's no lip syncing. I want a high time. school marching band. That'd be good. Too. That, was, that was Super Bowl one. Yes, yeah. exactly. Did you know that 1970 was Carol Channing? Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Or the, it was, it was, Hello, Dolly. Or the, the golden, Lady Gaga. Of or the, the golden 70s. days of Up with People. Yes, exactly. Right. Up with People. Chubby Checker, I All think, right. was also a halftime. Chubby Checker. He was not yeah. coming out against Trump then. You, can, you know, you Marching can't call him Chubby good. anymore. That's fattest. You're right. He's, yeah. uh, he's more like, I think you can call him. Yeah, he's he's robust. Like, horizontal. He's robust. Horizontal. There you go. It's All right. Still use Chubby. We got to go. Brian Kilby, you're leaving us. Thank God. Thank you. We got more coming up. Has anyone done a segment yet on Super Bowl ads? Because I think we're going to do that next and I, I know that's unpredictable but we're always breaking new ground but first you know your football terms cat and tyrus quiz the fans looks like there's some extracurricular activity on the field <laughs> means somebody's doing a little something they shouldn't be doing yes no it means like volunteer work like they're doing like there's something they should be doing like raking leaves for the children they need to air it out more Throw the ball along. Yes. <laughs> that means if their socks are wet and they got to dry it out on the clothesline. No. <laughs> the quarterback has happy feet. It means that he uh, maybe let the pressure get to him a little bit in the pocket, dances, and uh, doesn't quite stand in there as calmly like Matt Ryan does. No, Great no, dance. no. That means he has happy feet. The movie on DVD. Love those penguins. Right? Don't you love those? Oh, no, you were correct. Love those first. penguins. All right. Stop it. He's as sporty as I am shorty. Joining us, Clay Travis. He hosts Outkick the Coverage weekday mornings on Fox Sports Radio. We're going to be talking about Super Bowl ads because no one else is talking about them. They shell out five million bucks for 30 seconds of time. That's more money than Bill O'Reilly spends on his brill cream. <laughs> is it worth the cash? Let's start with this ad from Honda. When you start out, you might not know where you're going or what you're doing or why you're carrying this red rose with you. Believe in yourself. You think that any of these folks believe that I'd make it? Definitely not. Here's to chasing dreams and the amazing places they lead. The all-new CRV. All right, Clay. 
I don't know about you, but that creeped the hell out of me. It's also totally ineffective. I have no idea. What, I just think about it being like Harry Potter. Yeah. You know, like the moving picture thing a little bit. I don't really care what yeah. those guys looked like when they were celebrities. It's yeah. a weird kind of, we're going to mix tech with a car and hope people get confused, I think. I just found it. It was like, haha, look at me. I'm more famous than all of my obscure friends. <laughs> yeah. That's insulting to me. I am what? boycotting yearbooks. Not Honda, though. I love their cars. Oh, I, I don't love their cars at all. I don't fit in them, so I don't care whether it's a yearbook or a, a new statue or a pretty water fountain. I don't care. What do you drive, Tyrus? I'm a Chevy guy. Yeah, a big Chevy. truck. A big truck. Yeah. A big truck. I don't know. I, uh, I just find, you know what that tells me? That technology can make us, can frame us in any crime. That they can make, if they can make anything possible, I'm going to get framed for some horrible thing that I did in a film in Germany. That's what you think about. That's what I think about. <laughs> yes, all right. There's another ad. This broke new ground. It features Mr. Clean, and I think he's been working out. Got what you want, got what you need. Think your dream about your fantasy. I think I, 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 I Sarah? Sarah? Clean enough? I'm both speechless. Uh, Randy, what, what what are you thinking right now? I, I, every time I see that, I'm just not quite sure I should be watching it. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 you know what it is? You know what it is? They have cameras in their house. I find this whole thing, Clay, I find this disgusting. Like, cartoon human sex. I mean, she's attracted to, it's, it's, it's like almost as bad as bestiality. It, yeah, wow. Uh, yeah, I, yes, I went there. It if it was is, a cartoon uh, animal, porn, I would be very it's upset. It's porn for women. This is, I'm a married guy. This is yeah. why I pay for somebody to come clean the house, because my wife is more likely to sleep with me uh -huh. if the house is clean. Wow. And so, I mean, I, I really do think it's probably an effective ad for guys who are like, yeah, if she'll sleep with me, the house is clean. Never made that decision that Where's way. Where's the husband? <laughs> He's out working two, three jobs. Is yeah. she getting on with Metro Mr. Clean? Yeah, I don't get it. Mr. Clean used to stand. He used to be this big. I mean, now I keep my apartment class. very, very messy as a feminine. This act. <laughs> oh, here's my. I'm just happy. I think, I think Mr. Clean is brave for it's coming Mr. out Dirty. in this commercial. I'm just happy about yeah, that. Mr. All right. Dirty. This is a very disturbing commercial from Bud Light. <gasps> yeah, to be honest, I don't even have an excuse, man. I'm just gonna stay in. <gasps> Hello, Brian. Mackenzie, what are you doing here? My soul can't rest when people don't drink Bud Lights with friends. Oh. Not at this very moment, your friends are hanging out and you're missing it. I just didn't think that it was like a big deal, you know? This is disgusting. Huh? Pat, you love this it's ad. It's amazing. It's I, disgusting. I think more companies should use death to uh, sell products. <laughs> yes. Their mortality, remind us of our mortality. When he says, my soul can't rest when people aren't drinking Bud Lights with their friends. That's amazing. I want my tombstone to say that. I thought it was fantastic. Please, I remember yeah. the original Spuds McKenzie. Like, right. everybody had t-shirts. It was incredible. I would bring him back and keep him back. Like, yeah, I, but that, that dead dog, dog who he was. It's that's a right. dead dog. That guy was well, 20 years old. Bringing him back he'd have been like, dead. uh, uh, white spotted face. But I don't you know. Like, he would have to Google his phone. Kids, you need to know about like, his death. Uh, they need to know about oh, that. Come on. Every, 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 ad, ad, every ad is better with animals. That is true. Why I mean, yes, why why do you be dead? That's, even a dead puppy. Just bring him back because because go why wouldn't, why wouldn't, why yeah, wouldn't he ghost. be dead? Well, you, you know, it's something we need to talk about. It's something we all share. Yeah, this is what he dies. Yeah, yeah. All, but all I don't think you sell beer with dead pets. Well, I think that they sold it to me. All right, good. Well, you know, it doesn't take much to get you to drink a beer. It's true. All right. This next ad, surprisingly, is not for Quaaludes. It's for avocados. Avocados. Delicious. Eat them. Eat it. Everyone loves guacamole for suburban bombs. Come and get it, hipster. Clay, um... You think this is an ad for ecstasy? I'll tell you why. It's why Donald Trump is building the wall. <laughs> Let's be honest. And also, John Lovitz has the best damn agent of all time. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, How does he get the avocado ad of everybody available? Well, it's simple. Uh, He's a human avocado. So creepy, I kind of liked the first it. Guy. You liked it? it I, might... I just like the role, the casting of Listen, the last year, the creepiest commercial ever was the, was the Gangnam Style pistachio. Right. It's off the hook. 
Okay. Congratulations, All right. John Lovitz. I, I had a game. night in Mexico <laughs> during college that was just like that. <laughs> and it was with exactly. John Lovitz. Exactly. You woke up with John Lovitz. He's the king of creep. John <laughs> yeah. Lovitz is the king of creep. You need a creepy guy in a movie, you bring in John Lovitz. You need a creepy guy to scare your kid at a birthday party, John you bring Lovitz. in John Lovitz. Did you notice that a year ago no one was putting avocado on toast? And now wherever you go, it's avocado yeah. toast, it's avocado like very toast. very high-calorie bread. Yeah, it's fat, it's, it's, it's fat, fat man's toast. You don't get back to California very often, do you? No, I'm not allowed there after that incident. Oh, okay. The avocado. Oh. It has a pit. All right, here's a disturbing ad. It's for Skittles, the candy for people who can't handle M&Ms. Katie. Katie. Mm. Katie. Mm. Katie. Katie. Mm. Katie. Mm. Katie. Katie. Mm. Katie. Mm. Katie. Mm. Katie. Mm. I, that was my favorite ad. No? You I know, think it was the worst by far. Really? Why? Oh, yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? What's wrong with it, Clay? I just think it's boring. Yeah. yeah, there's not a lot going on. It's the same thing you over watch and over again. Middle aged people shift around their bedroom on the floor. Why? <laughs> what about that appeals to you? Because that's what I do. <laughs> that's how I get up in the morning. I have problems. You I know. expected Mr. Clean to come in there at the end. <laughs> yeah, at the top. Yeah. I, I John Lovitz on a tree going, yes, throw more Skittles. <laughs> I, it's amazing to me that somebody made millions of dollars to come up with that idea. I thought right? that was I mean, a brilliant like, idea. I thought that was no, a that was that was just. I've never there wanted was Skittles to less. But, what were they doing before he threw the Skittles in? Right, they were just okay. sitting on the couch? Did you notice a trend here? In her room. Uh, avoca yeah. Avocados and Skittles. These are foods that are some, somehow have drug-like powers. People need them. Whenever you see drug commercials, they treat them like they're inert substances. Like they're walking on the beach after they take Lunesta or whatever. But with food, food is the drug. It's kind of interesting how they switched it. Yeah. Does that make sense? Or am I talking to Again, avocado, I, the new crack? Yes, exactly. Yes. I've eaten an avocado, and, and you can have people in two hot tubs side by side. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's like it, fine. Avocados from Mexico. I love avocados. They're okay. Twenty-one grams of fat in each avocado, but it's good fat. I don't buy any of that. Aren't we all? I have good yeah. fat. Yeah. All right, Clay. Pleasure. Please come back to New York, do the show when we're back there. Love to do it. All right. Up next, a story so hot you'll need to wear oven mitts on your face. How can President Trump win o o over all of us lazy Americans? It rhymes with paid time off. If you'll be in the New York area and would like to be part of our studio audience, email GregTix at FoxNews.com. We're back on location from Houston. He's got more game than Milton Bradley. Now joined by Matt Eisman, actor, comedian, and host of American Ninja Warrior. He's also a contestant on the new Celebrity Apprentice. All right, I got a theory. President Trump can win over the entire country in one easy step, and that is buy me a pony. But also, make Super Bowl Monday a national holiday. Consider, in a poll of eight people I asked about this at the hotel bar, seven said, yes, it should be a holiday. The eighth person said, get your hand off my thigh. <laughs> that was Tyrus. Anyway, Heinz Ketchup is leading a public petition to make Smunday a national holiday, claiming that 16 million people take the day off anyway. Those lazy people. Another option, move the big game back to President's Day weekend, since the day is already after a holiday. If nothing else, Mr. President, making Super Bowl Monday a national holiday would leave us more time to play ping pong with our cats. Uh, that's teamwork, Matt. Much like in the new yeah. Celebrity Apprentice. We, my former teammate, we were just talking about him, John Lovitz in there. Yeah, that's true. Hey, wow. you, when you hang out with Lovitz, you cannot help but start talking like him. Well, yeah. Or John Lovitz, <laughs> thank you. He was crazy. Is this whole feud between Trump and Schwarzenegger manufactured for ratings? They did call me and ask if, they, <laughs> if I thought this would be good. I will tell you, it was surreal having the President of the United States pray for Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> like, no, pray, no pray for Arnold, pray for me. I'm Final Four against yeah. Boy George. I, I think, I, I don't know if it is manufactured. Here's the problem. It happened on a, I think a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Right. And with the news cycle, honestly, by Monday, the time the episode, it's going to have moved on. Yeah. You know, it's time for Boy George to change his name to Man George. He's I mean, he's closing in on 60. You just said you want to be a water man person. Like, yeah, but I'm Water different. person, Cap. All right, all right. Person. Let's, I want to uh, ask about this whole thing. about. I'm not sure I want a holiday, Matt. 
I think. Would, would, by the way, did John Kerry have any influence over this with Teresa Hines? Yeah. Kerry? Yeah. yeah you know. um, here's my point about this. It, I feel like this is Spinal Tap. Where it's Super Bowl Sunday, why not move it just to Saturday? <laughs> call it Super Bowl Sunday, and then have Sunday be your day off, and they're just going because it's called Super Bowl Sunday. That is too. It's it's final you can't it's go to eleven. Saturday. Right. You Sunday is their day. It's already the number one call-in sick day in America. Yeah. Yes. The day after the Super Bowl. I, that, why not just get it over with and go ahead and? We're do not working Friday? anyway. Yeah. yeah. Whatever you're doing, you know, I bet yeah. there's more industrial accidents. The people who get to work with a lousy hangover, they get in the forklift. Next thing you know, they've like crushed their buddy Steve, and then they've like left for Tijuana. I hate when that happens. And this is especially for people that don't especially care about the game like I do. Uh, black because if you're not black interested black in something, what do you have to do? Drink until it's interesting. So then the next day is even harder for us. I'm a big fan of it. I, I, let's do it. I have a theory, Tyrus, that it's not really the alcohol. It's a food hangover. When you eat a lot of food, it's, it's, it's just, just like that. Getting... It's the journey. You're missing the fans' journey. They start at training camp. They go through the whole season. They go through trades. They go through injuries. They go through their fantasy football letdowns and stuff. It, and the Super Bowl is a culmination of everything that comes together. And then there's a big depressing thing like, I got nothing to watch for the next, you know, yeah. that's what yeah. it is. I'm Monday also dealing with is my the day own that you have to fix your marriage. <laughs> it's the I'm day that own. you realize <laughs> you're going to have to take her out to dinner this week. That you can no longer duck out of church because it's the big game. Now you got to go. It's a, it's a it's a rough ending to a, the wonderful thing that is football. Why don't they just make the game shorter? That way it's... Okay, stop. Right, stop talking. It is too shorter? Long. Stop it. Yeah. That's That's the commissioner talked about that. They want to have fewer commercials. You know, no, but I want, I want fewer penalties. Get rid of the penalties. All penalties go away. Uh, add just, weapons. No penalties. Add it's weapons. Thunder, though. Yeah, if you're injured, you stay on the field. Anyone no. declare no. Uh, You're no. right, though. I do think this would be a move to declare Monday a holiday and just give everyone. It's snow day. Yeah. We all love a snow day. But it, you know what, though? America prides itself on a work ethic. We're not France. Yeah. We don't want to turn into Europe, wherever that is. I don't even, I'm not even sure you But if we're saying we need a day off because we're so drunk and so full of avocado toast, I think there's some American pride in that. Yeah, that is true. And, and, and maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know why they're applauding. You're, you're, you're missing time. the worst part for the for the team that loses. You got to wait another day to go to work for that guy who's waiting on you. <laughs> so you're better off getting it over because that water cooler, if Atlanta yeah, goes down right. by 20, let's say, and then you got to go in and that guy's waiting for you and yeah. he wants his $10 those, bet with $2 bills that you those made. Those ridiculous oh, bets oh, yes. you agreed to the that you thought you'd yeah, never have to pay yeah. Yeah. yeah, Monday is it's D-Day. Yeah. When you go in. You have, you have to go you have face the mat. Though I'm going to call him sick. Oh. I'm calling him sick. <laughs> I am sick. But see, I, okay, this is the problem. I'm actually sick. I have the flu. Uh, and and I, if I, so if I call him sick, no one's going to believe me. You know, it's not it fair really to me. It really is all about you. It's all about me. Yeah. All right, we got to move on. Greg, we're giving you the rest of the night off. Yes. Go get drunk. I can't because I'm sick. I'm on like six <laughs> different pills. And none of them are illegal, unfortunately. Mm. Coming up. I predict this next segment will be our predictions for Super Bowl 51. I know, we're nothing if not predictable. But first, Cat, Tyrus, and the football quiz. I'm going to ask you a guy a football cliche, and you're going to tell me what it means, okay? Okay. They're going to call a timeout to ice the kicker. So he loses his mojo. Yes, great, no, great answer. That's so they put an ice in his pickleback shop because it's all about booze and sports and boobs. No, it's not. Defense is starting to assert itself. It's starting to get tough. I'll accept that. It's starting to get tough. Yes, oh, yes. No, it means when you're starting to assert yourself and when someone doesn't text you back, you don't text them back right away either because you don't accept things. Yeah that Cat. you're from Cat. others Cat. that you're not willing to accept Cat. from yourself Cat. because you deserve better treatment than I'm that. Do so you understand? I, I know he didn't text you back, did he? He no, should have texted you back. Thank you. Okay, this is not drunk, about right? relationships. We're back from Houston, so it wouldn't be a special Super Bowl show without predictions. I'm going to start with you, Randy Cross. Right. What do you got? I love Atlanta. I live in Atlanta. Yeah. I think the state of Georgia will have the whole day off tomorrow right, right. after they win. Yeah. I won't bore you with a score. No, but, you know, I want to ask you another question. Who's better, Tom Brady or Joe Montana? Who's lost the most Super Bowls? 
But yeah. oh. between those two. Uh, he's got to have Joe Cool's back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, got, I got to ride and die with my guy, Joe. I think he's the best. Joe wasn't nice to me, you know. He was standing in front of my apartment, and he didn't even say hello. Anyway, go ahead. He never liked stalkers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not even reverse stalkers. Exactly, exactly. All right, Matt. Um, listen, Tom Brady is an unbelievable quarterback. Arguably, along with Montana, in a way, one of the greatest. But I think after Gaga's halftime performance, he's going to quit, announce he's running for president, and the Falcons are going to win. Mm, ah. Interesting. Uh, Tyrus, thoughts? Uh, man, I think LeGarrette Blunt's probably going to run for about a buck fifty on Atlanta's uh, no defense. Uh, Patriots by about twenty. And you know, Tom Brady is a saint. Uh, and if you've seen the movie Ted Two, that is an accurate depiction <laughs> of Tom Brady. The man is. is he is greatness. There is only one Joe Montana. That era will never be reproduced, but with the exception of that era, Tom Brady is he's, he's the best. Brady was in Ted, too? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm, I'm going to have to look that Check up, Matt. I talked to Bill Belichick myself. Really? really? Yeah, and he said that the Patriots are going to win absolutely for sure. But of course he's going to say that. I, but I talked to him myself. When did you talk I to him? I know. Yesterday. Wow, you know what? That, so we actually have a kind yeah, of a we scoop. That, we yeah. never have scoops on yeah, this show. Yeah, I got wow. it myself. I got that. I went and I got that interview. Did he wow. break it down and explain? Yeah, oh, yeah, he broke it down. He this broke it. Yeah. I am. I'm going to pick the Patriots, and only for one reason, because of course, both uh, myself and Tom Brady are Sarah Padres from Sarah wow. High School. Don't forget Barry Bonds. And Barry Bonds. Yeah, we try to. You know, Barry. <laughs> Barry Bonds. Oh, he never was convicted. He used to. <laughs> he never tested positive. Ty got nothing Ty on him. He used to sit behind me, no lie, behind me in Spanish class, and kick my desk so he could look up my Spanish answers. That's what Barry Bonds used to and do. And that so helped he him get. He was using PEDs series. back then. Yes, yes. Thank Thank you, was a PED. We got him. We got to move. Final thoughts. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm here with Patriots owner Bob Kraft and coach Bill Belichick. Very exciting. Very exciting, guys. What's the what's the game plan? What's the game plan, Bill? Game plan. We've got to keep the ball away from uh, Matt Ryan. He's an excellent, excellent quarterback, wow, one of the best wow, in the game. Wow. And uh, I, I think our defense is up for it, and uh, we're going to score a lot of points. And wow. Great to meet you. It's great. What about you? What Looks do you think, like Bob? you grew a beard, Bill. <laughs> yeah, it's gone a little gray in the, over the years. You know, football does that. Matter of days. <laughs> Can you believe it? No, oh, actually, I can't believe it. Oh, my God. I've met before. Yeah. Um, he knows your name. Yeah, that's great. You know what they say? Bill <laughs> Belichick knows everybody's name. Out of time, you know what that means. What you've wanted to say all show, but haven't had the chance to say, so here's your chance to say it right now. So, Randy, Randy, I got a weird question. Okay. Uh, what's gonna happen to you when you die? Uh, when I die, yes. I'm gonna donate my brain to the Concussion Legacy Foundation up in Boston. Chris Nowinski, cutting edge stuff he's doing with the research on that. And I figure it's kind of a for me, it's a pay it forward deal for. Yeah. The kids that'll play football in the future and they can make informed decisions because the yeah. guys that played now or played in my era yeah. we didn't make informed decisions yeah and you know it's not like you're gonna need the brain no i do get to keep <laughs> it until i'm done with yeah, it yeah 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 but i mean I, I would respect you more if you gave it right now but i understand you're a good man i have a lot of friends that probably would tell you they couldn't tell the difference <laughs> <laughs> matt well after such a selfless act like that i don't want to talk about myself but Celebrity Apprentice on Monday night and American Ninja Warrior is coming back. And I want to say hi to my parents who are watching in Vail. Hi, Mom and Dad. It's always the parents. you got great parents. All right. All right. In the spirit of John Lovitz, my final thoughts, a final question, which you can answer on at Planet Tyrus. If Greg was a flower, would you pollinate him? <laughs> nice. Cat. I just want to say whether your team wins or loses, remember, it's always very embarrassing to lose. <laughs> That's well, nice. well said. You know the best part of being here in Houston? People cheering, and then other people who don't know you go, he doesn't he doesn't look like an athlete. <laughs> Is he a jockey? He's a sad little jockey man. A, oh, oh man. That's our I'll, I'll horse yeah. it up, you jockey it up next holiday. I will ride you, you got man. It. You, got a, you got a fan over here who might be willing to get in on the pollination I, thing. I, I'm scared to find out. All right. Thanks to Clay Travis, Matt Eisman, Brian Kilme, Randy Cross, Catherine Turner, and everybody out here. I'm Greg Gutfeld. I love you, America. I do. I really, really do.
the March Madness. Uh, okay, it's February. You need to get your head in the game. <laughs> I don't know what that means. That hit really cleaned his clock. Oh, God, I have no idea on that one. <laughs> I never heard that. Okay, you guys realize you're at the Super Bowl, right? Like it's football. You know what? Okay, stop. I'm gonna ask the baby. Let me. <laughs> he says clean o'clock is something got hit really hard. Smart baby. <laughs> smarter than cat. Cat. Yeah, okay. Okay. Up your hand.